Hello and welcome to The Last Tackle. It's a bumper evening of Rugby League on The Sportsman because if you're watching us live on Wednesday night, we are going to the Totally Wicked Stadium at 7.15 for a brilliant encounter, St Helens women versus the York Valkyrie. It's a top of the table clash. It was brilliant the last time I met live on The Sportsman. In the studio, I've got Kev Brown and Andrew Henderson. But we're going to start with some very, very sad news. We'd like to uh, pay tribute to uh, Bill Arthur. It was announced this week that uh, he died after a long battle with prostate cancer. Thoughts are with his family and friends. And Kev, brilliant commentator, brilliant bloke. Yeah, he was. He was a, he was a superb broadcaster and always made me feel welcome, whether I was a player or you know, working as a pundit with him, he, he went above and beyond for me um, and everyone. And um, I was absolutely devastated when I heard the news. And the rugby league community has lost a great commentator, but we've all lost a, a great friend too. And, you know, my thoughts are with his family. He voiced so many remarkable moments in the game, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, like I said, you know, echoing Kevin's thoughts there, you know, just a just a champion person. You know, a very warm natured guy. I remember every time I was in his company, he always had a genuine you know, concern and wanted to know a bit more about you. You know, he wasn't one of these people that kind of just was like high by type sort of mentality. Um, yeah, he just had a real genuine nature about him. Uh, I found him great. You know, and like you said, he had some some great moments within the game throughout the years. And again, it's a, it's a sad loss for the game. But uh, like you said, we. We, we, we do wish his family all the best at this time. Uh, Kev, I read quite a few comments from pundits, former players, so how he really helped you with the transition from being a player into the commentary box. Yeah, he did. He, he, he always gave me little tips. And um, the one thing that he was great at is, is winding people up as well. So he often worked with Terry O'Connor. So Terry O'Connor uh, is one of the biggest practical jokers. So it was always directed at me, but when me and Bill got together, we'd always directed at Tez and team up. And uh, but but in terms of him helping me, um, when to come in and, and when not to come in, I did the Good Friday game a couple of years ago, and I just remember that how easy it was working with him because there was no ego with him. He he wanted you, like Endo says, he wanted you to have a good experience. He wanted you to feel good, and um, and the experience he had, he was more than willing to pass it on. Yeah, brilliant broadcaster and uh, top bloke. So our thoughts are with his family and friends. Are really sad news this week about uh, Bill Arthur's untimely death. Moving on, we'll take a look at some eye-catching results from the uh, weekend shortly. But first, a modern legend of the Betfred Super League has announced his retirement. Luke Gale! the ball and gets the try. So Luke Gale is with him. He gives it to Gale. They're in again. A fantastic rugby oh, league try. Luke Gale has a swagger about him. Incredible! Luke Gale is the hero for the Rage Rhinos. Luke Gale with a drop. Goal! He has kicked it, Luke Gale. And there's another memorable Luke Gale moment. Yeah, Luke Gale has announced his uh, retirement, obviously, at Wakefield at the moment. Won the 1895 Cup on uh, Betfred Challenger Cup Day. Uh, he was your half-back partner, wasn't he, in the World Cup? He was. He was my, he was my roommate, too. He's so a good laugh uh, as well, isn't he? Oh, he's great yeah. fun. Uh, he was clean, so uh, he was a good roommate. <laughs> um, and I think the only thing that's got better in terms of his performance is the older he's got is his airline. So, um, <laughs> no, true, true, true champion of the game, ultra competitor. I think, you know, everywhere he's been, he's contributed and made that place better. Uh, I think he'll go to be a great coach. He was, he, he loved chatting rugby. We, we would chat rugby late at night. There were no computer games in our room. It was rugby, rugby, rugby. So I think Gailey will be a terrific coach and I think that's where he's going to go into. But um, 
what a stellar career he's had and, and um, congratulations to him and all the best in his retirement. Uh, standout moment, obviously, that semi-final against St. Helens with the, uh, the you know the last-minute drop goal. That was a hell of a performance. He did a kick as well just before. Yeah, no, outstanding. Look, he's had some, and he's had some wonderful moments in he, throughout his career. And you know, just to see his journey, I think he, he had to progress, you know, at Harlequins and, and London yeah, for yeah. a period there early in his stages, and then really grew his game down there, and then obviously came back up north. And you know, I think Castle was probably where he really. Yeah, really become at the forefront of his game or at the peak of his game, so to speak. Um, but echoing what Kev said there, you know, what a character, what a competitor, always had a will to win. Um, and like I said, has, has had some wonderful magic moments within the game and, and managed to support his team to, or whoever he was playing for at the time, to, to get some great results. And that season they got to the grand final, Cass, he was superb, wasn't he? Yeah, well, they were the best team in the competition if mm. Zach Hardacre... And not done what, yeah. unfortunately, he did. I think they, they win that game. Um, yeah, well, Leeds with the underdogs going yeah, into that. And, yeah, and, you know, the, the rest is history. But Luke Gale was the was the main man in that team. He was the, the vital cog that got that attack going. And that period of Castleford, they attacked as good as, you know, anyone I've seen uh, in the Super League for a long, long time. So, Gailey has had so many moments. The one moment that stands out in my head is uh, when we played at Wembley behind closed doors and I was on the opposition side yeah. and he got the drop goal Golf, at the end. Did, and as yeah. soon as it went to him, you just know that they don't miss. There's, there's certain players, Mark Sneed's the same, Gailey, George, they don't miss. And Gailey dropped that goal and he's done that many, many times for different clubs. So, yeah, I want to forget that one, but for the, all, all the other ones that he has knocked over, what a, what a true champion of the sport. Yeah, good luck, uh, Luke. He's sat in that seat a couple of times. No doubt we'll see him a bit more uh, next season now as he's announced his retirement. So uh, good luck to Luke Gale. Of course, Wakefield doing so well in the Championship. Right, let's turn our attention to the uh, Betfred Super League. Well, I tell you what, you couldn't pick some of the results uh, going into uh, the weekend, could you? Let's just talk about Leeds first of all. Uh, that was on uh, Thursday night. Brad Arthur is making a difference. He is. He's made a difference straight away. I would say Luke Robinson's making a difference too. They've been, you know, they've already had one win. They've been um, competitive, but it, it just looked like it was a battle of confidence and being underconfident. And whoever got in front first, uh, and I, and I just feel there was a there's a real key moment in that game uh, that that showed up Huddersfield's sort of fragile mental state at the moment. And when Jake Connor dropped that ball. Uh, they scored a try off the back of that. Then they went back to back and the game from that point just looked like it was over. And, and that's, you know, the, the two inches between your ears and that's probably what Luke Robinson needs to do. But Brad Arthur, straight away, he just seems to have got them playing together. They look much more aggressive defensively, but with the ball, I think they're trying things. Yep. And the combinations of, of the players... Well, he's getting that, the best out of it, your it, Brody Crofts now, isn't he? He is, and it looks like slowly what we all expected is, is starting to happen. I still think they're a dark horse for um, the playoffs and if they get in there, they are a danger to every other side in the corner. Well, that, that result means they've got a great chance of the playoffs now, just two points behind St. Helens. We'll talk about St. Helens in a moment. Uh, Kev touched on it. For me, the big difference with Leeds in the last two or three games is the defence. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, there's just a, a more steeliness yeah. about them, isn't there? Um, uh, yeah, a lot, of, probably a lot of the effort areas. We're starting to see them really front-loading a lot of energy in those effort areas of the game defensively. But I also think as well, structurally in attack, it's just starting to, to take shape too. And I think that's what we'll. That's when we. I think lose. they just look more aggressive too, and 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 that's not the cheap shots and all that. They just the, Jared O'Connor's leading that line yeah. speed. Sam Lasson is backing him up. Yeah. They just look like they've been let off the lead now and go and attack with the defence. Right, let's talk about Wigan Warrington. Look, I think Warrington winning is no real surprise nowadays, but Warrington Wigan uh, winning in that fashion was a surprise. 44. It was a huge surprise. At well, Wigan. There's not many times I've been at Wigan and I've been looking through record books. I was there at the game and I think 38 point gap is the record from year 2000. So that just shows you how long Wigan have been at home and how dominant they've been over a period. Uh, the result, yeah, I'm, I'm, I actually favoured Warrington, but the manner of result, yeah. I thought Luke Yates was terrific from start to finish. He set the tone. We talk about Leeds being aggressive. Well, I've not seen yeah. Warrington be as aggressive and value defence. And I think that's what they are doing now, the value in effort and defence, the attack. Martin Gleeson is taking care of that. But that, for me, was... 
probably the best performance that I've seen from Warrington in a long, long, maybe in 10 years. I've not seen Warrington as dominant across the board for a period of time. Uh, Sam Burgess extended his contract to 2026. They're clearly listening to Sam, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, look, you, you can't dispute the impact that Sam has had on that team and on that club since he's arrived. You know, they've, uh, you know, they're have they really on the up. You know, you, could, you can obviously thank Gary Chambers for sort of you know, maintaining and holding the forward at the back end of last year. But then since Sam's come in now, they've really elevated. I think he's got a great coaching team behind him as well, supporting him on that. And he's got a group of players there now that, that are generally playing for each other. You know, they really, they really, they're really buying into... What Is he's... that a difference? Because heads seem to go down very quickly in the last 18 months in that Warrington team. That yeah. seems to have stopped now. Oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a so massive... It's easier when you're winning. Oh, obviously, that, but, but it's a massive transformation. Yeah. You can see this genuine buy-in to whatever he's, he's, he's put in and place there. And when it's the trust and belief Correct. when things aren't going well that the plan will work. And yeah. I think that's what Sam... You know, he's, he's, he's a superstar of the game, but the way he speaks, he's just got the confidence and the lad and the buy-in. Yeah. Um, when the wheels do start rocking, they're completely focused and they believe what Sam's telling them works and, and at the moment it is working. Yeah, and I also think too, I think when you look at the squad, I think there's a really good balance to that squad at the moment of, of youth and experience, you know, and some sort of real class in there too, sprinkled over the top. So I just think the balance of their squad... The late additions good. have been key too. Yeah, Throw I in Luke don't Yates disagree. And John yeah. Bateman will make his debut yeah. this week. What, what a boost that is for the club. Yeah, so things going very well as it stands at the moment. Wigan have got a game in hand, but Warrington Wolves are top of the table. Right, where do we start with St Helens then, uh, Hendo? Uh, five defeats on the bounce. You have to go back to 1986 for the last time. Saints lost five on the bounce. Yeah. Is there an underlying problem? Is it now cyclical and not, you know... Other clubs have moved on, or is this just a blip for the Saints? Uh, look, or do we not know? Yeah, it's a it's an interesting one. I, look, I know that at the moment they have got a, a number of injuries within the team, but they've still got a lot of their some key people out there playing. They've still got enough for me in the in the cavalry, you know, to to be able to getting some of them results. And, and if we're honest, you know, some of those losses have been very narrow, um, but I do feel a sense of. The more weeks that pass by and they're not getting that result, you know, the pressure is really building because they're, they're, a, they're a team in a club that are not used to that many losses. And I have a sense at the moment watching them that it's almost like there's a lot of effort at times, and, but there's too many people trying to solve it on their own, if that makes sense. I don't yeah, yeah. think they're collectively playing you know, together, if that makes sense, and almost trying too hard. Almost I mean, trying they probably need to, to like Alex to Wormsley back, don't they? I think they, they just need to relax a little bit. I think they need to trust that they are a good side with some good quality players, um, and they have got the ability to, to get results. I think they may be overthinking it a little bit too much at the moment. I do. I, I see a bit of that in, in their performances lately. You know, guys shooting out the line on their own, and you know, some of the execution just not being quite where it needs to be, or not reacting well enough whenever whenever there's a half break. There's not enough support in the frame. There's just little bits of their game for me just aren't quite where they need to be. So easy fixable but it's always easier said than done. I, I think it's it's a bit harder than easily fixable for Saints at the moment not only because mentally the confidence this is something that they have never been through. This Talk James Roby to come out of retirement? Maybe I, I think they need a couple but the problem is the players that have been pulling them out and keeping them in the games Jack Wellsby is out for six to eight weeks yeah. you've got uh, Johnny Lomax who's out for three weeks yeah. I think Percival might be out for a week too. Um, so the the players and the experienced players who, who Endo refers to about getting you out because they are good players, well, they're not going to be there. So it's going to be difficult for the the younger players coming in, if that's a Ben Lane, a George Whitby, a, you know, an Owen Dagnall, whoever comes in, it's going to be difficult. But um, I actually think Hull FC will be going there, rubbing their hands together with nothing to lose. And I, and I really fancy Hull FC to turn Saints over again this week. And they're improving, aren't they? Do you repeat that? I fancy LFC this week to um, to to make it even more difficult. Two months ago, he'd have been thrown yeah. out as being a madman, wouldn't you? For that yeah, comment. yeah. But we've seen Hull FC turn a corner. They beat Wigan recently. Uh, they've been close in in other games. I think Simon Griggs has really started to get some confidence going. And Saints are a wounded animal. Whether you know they've got a full reserve side out or what, it's still a massive coup to go there and and beat. 
you know, the, the dominant side of St. Helens, whatever state they're in. So they'll go there confident and rubbing their hands together in Saints. If they don't start well and get in front, I really fear for them this week. Uh, before we talk, Catalan, just a quick word on uh, Hull KR. Doing great guns, aren't they? I mean, second. I mean, obviously, and a home playoff is just a huge advantage. Yeah, absolutely. So I've, yeah, Hull KR are one of those that probably just gone a little bit under the radar, you know, in terms of, I think, Coming into the season, there were some high hopes and expectations because they had such a successful well, year last year. Building well for next year and as well, aren't they? Absolutely, you know? but I just think the way they're progressing is, is great. They're just Each year is getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And uh, the growth in the team and within the club has been uh, a joy to watch, really, to, to be honest. I mean, I think at the moment, OKR have scored the most tries in Super League. You know, they're playing some, a great brand of Rugby League. Um, and I think, they've, again, they're another team for me are very well balanced. And Mikey Lewis has just got something. Yeah, he just gets better and better. Yeah, I think yeah. three scores again at the weekend. Yeah, he's he just gets better. Great better. to watch. Yeah. And he's determined. Brilliant. Well, he's, he's the Bevan French, isn't he? Yeah. They give him the ball and, you know, he's a halfback who can create, but he just yeah. makes things well, up he's for the, himself. Well, he's got the most try assist in, in Super League at the moment alongside Mark Snead. So he's, you can see that he's creating a lot for his team. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm really impressed with Hulk KR. I just think... They're not shouting from the rooftops either. They're just going about their business. Um, and they're just, like you said, making massive strides for me as, as the years go by. Right, rounding off the weekend, uh, all eyes were on that. Sam Tompkins, as he made his uh, uh, Super League return. He, he didn't disappoint. He's like a fine wine, isn't he? He scored a try. He had an assist as well. And when you see him in this game as well, you can, look, you can see why they talked him into coming back, can't you? Well, not, he doesn't look like he's been aware. Um, everything that we're seeing here is, is Sam Tompkins at his best. Getting under the skin, showing his quality, you know, drifting and scoring. But you, you saw the try assist. That was just pure yeah. competitiveness. Competitive it was a yeah, poor exactly. kick, yeah. but he was willing to chase it, put his body on the line, yeah. cause a, a, a loose ball, and then they get on it and score. But I think what Sam does as well is just give the confidence to the rest yeah. of the team when he's sat yeah. in the changing room. You said last week as well, going into the playoffs as well, the game management can be the key. And that's what you get from someone like Sam Tompkins as well. Completely. And I thought Sam's game management in that game was terrific. I think if they'd have been with Sam Tompkins anywhere near that team, even if he'd have played 20 minutes the week before, I think they beat Castleford. Yeah. So the way he'll have a, an impact on the team, now he is in and amongst them more. I, I just think it's a great... I'm going back to your James Roby thing now. I've seen what Sam could do. I've no doubt that James yeah. Roby could do it, so let's get that going. <laughs> I bet Matt he'd love be... to come back, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and knowing James Roby, he's another one. There's not many goats knocking about. Sam's one and uh, James Roby's another. They don't get out of shape. They'll still be, he'll still be in shape and do a job. Look, I, I was surprised when I heard he was coming back, but when you watch that... Yeah, and I, I, that's a good decision. Yeah, I mean, and effectively, I mean, as Kev said, there, there's no doubt in my mind that Sam Tonkins has been ticking over, albeit not training probably to the level he, he would do if he was a player. But I'm sure he's been looking after himself with his weights and he's, he's running or whatever he's been doing, you know. Um, so, yeah, he's only been out of the game for just over six months, really, in it, seven, eight months. So he'd, he'd be fine to slot in, as we saw on the weekend. But just pick it up on the point Kev made there about game management. You know, we spoke about last year about Sam Tonkins. Now, for me, his game evolved over the last couple of years at, at Catalans. He's obviously instrumental as a fullback, but he was a real cog in that game management, you know, being that, that kicking game from 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 distance, you know, being another kick option at the back of plays. And he was, for me, someone that really got that team around. And I think we saw that evidence again on the, on the weekend. Now, if you're watching us before 7.15 on Wednesday night, tonight we have got a cracker for you in the Betfred Women's Super League. It's St. Helens versus the York Valkyrie. And it was an absolute classic when we brought you the reverse fixture last season. St. Helens really? level to it on that occasion. So now they come to the right again. Rahari looking for Carrie Roberts, who goes over against her former side and opens the scoring. He opens square. Just quickens up this sound. And York Great. sensing the opportunity to go back to back as Stanley brings us out to the right. Roberts choose to pass it on this occasion. I think she's in in the corner. The referee's just having a chat of his touch judge, but the try is scored. Tara Jane Stanley goes through the hands, it should be a certain try. Well, it's Renouf, it should be in, and she does get it down. So they've scored two on the right edge, they come to the left-hand side for the first time 
and find more points. Tamsin Renouf. Savannah Andrade brings oh. her down. Tackle, Goal it? three. Motta's head with options on both sides, but goes to the numbers on the right. Gaskin, again, just thought about that ball over Four. the top, but Open keeps player. it in hand. Six this is the fourth, but it's six game. again. So one. the pressure continues to build. Motta's head goes from Dami Half, and she's over. Referee just has a quick check, gives the try. Significant enter this set. Gaskin brings it up to the line. line. Then out the back, they're going to keep the ball in hand. Sahili out to Woozy. She's got Burke who brings it in and scores. I think she's made the error. I don't think there's anything in that other than the error. It's going to be all about composure now as Woozy finds a huge gap and is through. She's got Stanley chasing her down. Is she going to make it to the corner? She will. And straight from the scrum. St. Helens level the game and will Great have an try. opportunity to put their noses in front. This is the fourth wait, tackle. Wait, wait. Go, well Huge done. moment in this game as we come out to the right with Marshall. Could be the numbers available on the right hand side here as Roberts goes for the line. Roberts gets their second of the afternoon and York take the lead back. Yeah, it's a great try that one, isn't it? So that was early on this season, it went down to the wire. So 7.15 Wednesday night, live, a kickoff 7.30 from the Totally Wicked Stadium. It's St. Helens versus your Valkyrie, two of the best teams in the Betfred Women's Super League. And we've actually got the York head of rugby is alongside me, uh, Andrew Henderson here. And uh, the women's game is a big part of what you're trying to do at York, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. No, look, we, we value the importance of, of the women's game. We value the importance of inclusivity as well. You know, obviously, as a well, game... Well, rugby league do as well, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, so I was just about to say that. You've took the words out of my mouth. As a game, that's what we, we pride ourselves on. Um, but, you yeah, know, we're big advocates and supporters of the women's game there. And we've got some, you know, some, some really good things going on at the club. You know, certainly with our, our player pathways now with our 16s and our 19s program uh, for the women's obviously now to feed into the Valkyrie and, and we're just trying to improve those standards each year to just to make it more professional uh, and I think we're seeing that across the, the board now yeah. in, the, in the women's competition you know I think there's four teams there's still a gap yeah, like Wigan's improving aren't they correct you know? there's now four teams yeah. whereas probably at the start it may have been one or two now there's now there's four well, it, generally was, it was Saints Leeds and then York began to challenge yes, and now Wigan have improved. Correct. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So the, the standard is raising each year and, and uh, like I said, we we'll continue to do our best to try and be the top of that, I guess, the top of the tree, you know, and it's going to be a big challenge for the, for, for the women this year, you know. They've got some good tides around them now. Wigan, I think, have been the, the big improvers, a uh, real dark horse uh, this year and uh, Saints, as we know, and Leeds always have good pedigree of, of players there. So, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but it should be a cracking game tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, so that's live and exclusive on the Sportsman. Got a women's international in Vegas, of course, in March. I don't know if you're available to go to Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> I don't know if you're available. <laughs> I'd love to be there with you, Mark, and watch that. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going yet myself, to be honest. <laughs> Obviously, we are all available to uh, go to Vegas and represent uh, Rugby League out in Vegas. And we'll represent Rugby League properly, won't we? We will. It'll be great. And, and the longer, the better. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's turn our attention to the uh, Betfred Men's Super League. Uh, Thursday night, Wigan Warriors versus the Huddersfield Giants. A, a wounded Wigan Warriors. A wounded Wigan. And you feel for Luke Robinson, um, you know, coming off a big defeat at home. You know, he's got to go there now. And, you know, Wigan Warriors, they don't often lose two games, never mind three on the bounce. And... Yeah. I just get that feeling. I think Jay Field's back in the squad. They're starting yeah. to get a few bodies back. Um, well beaten. They'll be asking questions and making sure that they provide the answers on the field. Um, so, yeah, I can't see the result going any other way than for Wigan Warriors this weekend. Wigan, Huddersfield. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Kim. I can't see anything but a Wigan win. I just think the manner it's the manner of the way they lost last week. I just think they'll have that grip between the teeth. Uh, and I think for Robbo too, like he's, yeah, there's, yeah, Huddersfield's still got a few guys missing. Obviously, they've had Luke Gates depart recently, which doesn't help. And there's a few other guys uh, with injuries, um, which is going to put him under, a, you know, put his side under a little bit more pressure. But for me, they've got, they, they just need to, Relax, go there. The pressure is, is on Wigan for me rather than Huddersfield, you know. that I think they can go there and almost with a free hit to, to, to say otherwise. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, when you go there a little bit more, drop the shoulders, relax, hey, it can, it can sometimes prove uh, to be a good recipe for a victory potentially. But I can't see it this week. Also on Thursday night, Castleford Tigers versus Lee Leopards. Great win for Lee against Saints, of course. Yeah, and, and Castleford have been going OK yeah. recently themselves. I think, you know, Craig Lingard's really getting the best out of that squad. Uh, but the way Lee 
performed at the weekend against Saints. I yeah. can't see anything. If they perform anywhere near that, I can't see anything other than a, a, a Lee victory. I think they need it more as it's well, better, just, yeah, just to sneak in them playoffs yeah, in the game. Look, a month ago, it looked like they had no chance of the playoffs. Slim chance, outside chance. Yeah. Well, I, I think they are the best team at the moment outside the top six, um, purely because the results that they had at the start of the year yeah. for me were down to the injuries. They've and got them players yeah. back. Uh, and I think they're a danger to everyone. Whoever comes up against them know that they need to be on or they get beat. Castley. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I agree. I think I think from a Leeds perspective, um, they're desperate. Uh, and I think we'll see a desperate performance from them on on that night. Because, uh, like I said, I, th- I still think there's some belief within that club and within that team that they could maybe potentially nick a, nick a six six spot playoff position there so uh, I think they'll build off the back of that comprehensive victory last week over St Helens I think Cass will compete no doubt about it I think we can see that that's been evident from the halfway point of the season that Cass have become more competitive they've made massive improvements defensively uh, and they have got some confidence about them so I don't think it's going to be a, a pushover for Lee uh, on, on that, that night but I do think they'll have too much uh, you know in, in in the locker to, to overcome a very dogged and determined Castlewood side. Friday night, we have a cracker. Yeah. Warrington Wolves versus Hull KR. Yeah, no, this is this is the match of the round, no doubt about it. Um, this is this is going to be a great, great contest. Uh, yeah, I, it's a really tough one to call. Two high-quality teams. I'm probably going to edge towards Warrington, I think, off the back of uh, the performance last week and the fact that Sam's just been announced this week as extending his contract, I think will give the team a boost. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to just say Warrington to nick it, but it's really a tough one to call. I think you've got two quality sides going out of the uh, I think it's almost a shootout for the um, League Leaders' Shield. Yes, I do. I think it's that big a game. I think, I think Wigan might disagree with you still. Yeah, the game no, no. Wigan got a game yeah, they've got a game in yeah. hand, but I just, I just feel these two sides, form-wise at the moment, are travelling a little bit better. Um, I think Warrington are the favourites going into this, but if, if Willie Peters and Mikey Lewis can bring out the best of the, the rest of the team, I, I, I do think this is going to be a really close contest. Yeah. With Luke Yates and with John Bateman in, and, and like you said, Sam Burgess, I think emotionally everything's there for a, a big win for Warrington and one step closer to making it their year. Do you want to say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I could say it this year because yeah. Moz isn't here, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really do think it, it, it could be their year. If they can keep performing to the level that we've seen, um, they're as good as anyone. They're as good a chance as anyone. Well, it's not St Helens year at the moment, isn't it? Five defeats on the bounce for go to Hull on Saturday. We've always he- already heard Kev say that he fancies Hull to beat St Helens. I do. Um, I think for the first time in a long time, Hull FC fans are going to turn up to the stadium with a bit of uh, enthusiasm and expectation. Um, you know, there's a, there's a wounded Saints, usual juggernaut side coming to town, and there is still a big scalp, but... I think it's all set up for a really tricky test for Saints, and they'll be um, they'll be having crisis meeting after crisis meeting. What what is it that's not going right? Regardless of the team you've got on the field, you cannot go down by forty points. That's not uh, acceptable at Saints. So I think Hull FC is probably the best chance to to get another huge scalp at home. I don't disagree with Kev in terms of this is a great opportunity for Hull FC coming in against St Helens, but I do believe St Helens will find a way to get to get the, the victory on. On Saturday, um, I think it is going to be a close contest. I think I, it, the, the start's going to be so key to this game for me because I do believe I think if, if Saints don't get off to to a good start and, and the longer holler in the contest, then the pressure really starts to mount on on Saints and, and those little questions of, of seeds of doubt start creeping into their heads there. But if Saints can get off to a good start and lay a decent platform, um, I think they that they can have enough to to get the result. Salford Reds versus Leeds. Well, this is another interesting one. Um, phew, it's a tough one. This has got some, some good ingredients to it too, and all the Paul Rowley sort of stuff with the Leeds and all that. So there's a little bit of, of that off-field sort of drama which comes into this contest. Leeds obviously chasing that top six. It's a must-win for Leeds. So, you know, it's a must-win. Um, I think Salford, you know, getting a good result there against Carsford. But again, their form probably recently hasn't been where it, where, where it was maybe a month pre, prior to that. Um, I think you're going to see Leeds take this one this week. Yeah, yep. I, th- I think Salford, I watched the game last time uh, Salford played against Leeds and I thought Brodie and Andy Ackers were just shut out the game. I think Paul Rowley knows them two players, especially inside yeah. out. 
Um, and it's a must win for both sides, not just Leeds. Salford need to win to, to maintain that um, sixth spot, top six spot. So, but I think at home, Salford with you know Paul Rowley in charge of Salford and Ian Blee's on the the enemy lines in in the blue and gold. Will, um, you know they'll the talk will be about him. For, but for me, Salford Red Devils this week will win the game. And finally, London Broncos versus Catlands on Sunday. Yeah, I think. Catalan Dragons uh, it'll be a, a foregone conclusion there. I think, like I said, London will do their best to compete for as long as they can. But I think Catalans will, uh, yeah, I think off the back of last week now, they're probably a, a team that's had a bit of a lull mid-season. And I just feel now, you know, with Sam back in, you know, they've, they've had a dogged victory on the weekend. I think they'll want to start to try and find some form. And they can really utilise and use this game to get a good performance, hopefully score some points and build some confidence towards the, the back end of the season. I agree. Without Sam, I wouldn't be as confident. But with Sam in the team, I don't think complacency will be an issue. I think he'll demand that the rest of the team compete like he does and, and Catalans will get the job done. Right, gents. Thanks so much for coming in. Enjoyed your company. Right then. Some 15 Wednesday night in St. Helens versus York in the Betfred Women's Super League. And if you're watching us after Wednesday night, watch it back on YouTube because it's normally an absolute cracker when those two meet. Thanks for watching, see you soon.